My name is Ron Bene. I'm Director of Business Development for DQ Systems in Europe. In June this year, AbilityNet and DQ ran an in-person event to bring together many of the top accessibility leaders across several industries. These roundtable events took place over two days and was for people to share their experiences and tips when leading an accessibility program. And we've collected some of their thoughts. I am Mark Walker from AbilityNet. I'm the head of marketing. So first of all, there's an amazing group of people that we've met both days, very different, but shared passion for accessibility. You can tell that that's why they do the job they do, that they, they believe it's the right thing to do. I'm Preeti Kumar, the founder and CEO of DQ Systems. The thing that I like is the absolute transparency in sharing the challenges that are being faced and then the commonalities across large organizations as they try to scale accessibility. They're doing it in pockets. They're doing it um, almost like a Joan of Arc effort. But then as they try to systemize, as they try to scale, the challenges actually are similar as we see in the United States. My name is Christopher Patno. I'm the head of accessibility and disability inclusion for Google for EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. The lab is a physical manifestation of nothing about us without us. It's a place where we come and learn about the needs of our, of our users and learn how to, to meet their expectations. And something like the European Accessibility Act gives us a, a, a really strong reason to need to do it in, a, in, a, in an intentional and direct way because the clock is ticking and, and we all have work to do. If we don't have these conversations now, we may miss the opportunity. Any of us would miss the opportunity to make sure our products meet the expectations of the users and the, of the legislators. I'm Lee Crooks. I work for KPMG. I'm a director in the Quality Engineering and Testing Services team. One of the things that I'm quite passionate about now is accessibility testing. Obviously, in, in the UK, we have regulations for public sector organisations to be accessible. We see banks always taking it a bit more seriously. But now I think it's becoming something that everybody's thinking about as the world is now more digital. Everybody's relying on technology to do everything in their lives. It's really important that all of these services are accessible. Yeah, so accessibility is all about making mistakes because you're never, you're never going to get it right for everybody. So if you make perfection the goal, you're going to fail for someone at some point. So it's really about having an idea, having the intention, building it, screwing it up, and then fixing it. And then doing this with the community so understanding where the areas that you need to fix it because everyone's needs are going to be different. Hi, I'm Bex Brindley. I work for NatWest and I lead our digital accessibility. I think the biggest thing I've learned is celebrate the small successes, right? It's progress over perfection. You could bite the whole ocean off and it's really hard. So just take that one small success, celebrate it, and then use that to do the next one, which is going to be even bigger and better. Accessibility for me is about creating independence for everyone. So if we can get this right, it's about embedding the processes and practices in everything that we do digitally and that means that we create that independence and that autonomy. My name is Martin Rafferty, I'm a test manager, program test manager and I work for Deloitte. I'm an SME in accessibility and usability um, on a big digital transformation programs. If you're just reacting to accessibility compliance, um, it's a very, very difficult process to adopt well and it's much, much more efficient to shift left and think about accessibility from the design uh, and concept stage. I think then you, you get on top of accessibility rather than the reactionary approach of just test, fix and retest. My name is Matthew Johnson, now he and him, and I'm the global head of disability inclusion at Footwork. But I think the key is you need the stakeholder buyout to implement accessibility. Yes, it's the right thing to have, but it's not good enough. You have to show the business value why accessibility is important. You know, you could talk about the purple dollar, you could talk about the customer base, increasing the customer base, the, the, lawyer, no, the, the brand, loyalty, so on. These are business value. And that's where you need to have your conversation. And it, as you heard about shift to the left, that's where you start. You need to have your conversation at the beginning and get the stakeholders by it. And then this journey becomes much easier.